The power of potential is not just great for people, it's also smart for business. Why is it smart for business? Well, there are four different things we do when we talk about talent, when we talk about people, that can be expensive. And so all companies want to drive more profitability, all companies want to be efficient and effective. Well, there's four ways that effectively managing talent and unleashing potential help you to be a more effective business. The first one is you got to have the right people. Right? We just talked about that. A company's success, an organization's success, depends on its people. And so finding the right candidate can actually be very expensive. Right? Depending on the particular role that we're talking about, it could cost thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or even over $100,000 to bring in the right person to the organization, depending on the level and the type of role we're talking about. Right? It can be very expensive. So if you do it wrong or you don't do it well, it's even more expensive. This could have a major impact on profitability for a business. If you do it right, conversely, you have a virtuous cycle. You can do extremely well, right? If you have a positive candidate experience, then it increases the likelihood of acceptance of an offer. If you streamline the process, it makes it easier for the candidate to apply. And if you have more applicants that are more apt to take the job, and you have more choices, and you're able to identify the right people, well, you don't need to spend as much time hiring. You have a higher success rate, you're gonna be more effective. You also need to develop your people. This kind of understates the point, right? High performers deliver up to 400% more than their counterparts. Actually, that understates it. We all have heard about the 10 Xers, right? Somebody really good at their job can do 10x more than their peers. They do 10 times more of the work. They're 10 times more productive. You see this all the time in businesses, in almost any role. So developing people is incredibly important to drive productivity. But also, if you don't develop your people, you have a different problem. If you don't develop your people, then you're at risk because your employees are 12 times more likely to leave your company. 12 times more likely. We used to say, this is all about the millennials, right? The millennials are the ones who are gonna have four or seven careers during their lifetime, and as a result, the millennials need to keep learning, and if they feel like they're not learning, their career's not advancing, then they're gonna go somewhere else. This is no longer just about the millennials. The millennials are now about half the workforce. So if the millennials are now half the workforce, that is no longer just a few employees. That's become the organization. And the organization is saying, if you don't teach me, I'm going to leave. Because people understand the disruption that's happening. It's, it's not a secret anymore. It's in your face. Everybody knows about it. We see the malls closing. We see the stores closing. We see the, the shift in pay, in compensation between the unskilled and the skilled labor force. And we understand that if you don't keep learning, you become obsolete now. So how do you solve this problem? What's something that you can do to really mitigate this? Well, we call it the 5 for 20 challenge. It's actually a fairly simple idea. Take 5% of your employees' time and let them train. Let them learn things. Spend 5% of your time training. Why 5%? Because it's actually an easy thing to remember. 
5% is one day, one work day a month on average. If you think about every month having four weeks, every work day having five days, 1 20th is 5%. It's one day a month. Could be one dedicated day like we do at Cornerstone. We have development days once a month. Or it could be time spread out over the course of a month. But we believe that that 1% will result in a 20% reduction in employee turnover. So whatever your turnover rate is right now, we think it'll go down 20% if you allow your employees to learn 5% of the time. Which, by the way, is also really good for the business. It makes you more agile, it enables you to have the skills you need to be competitive, but it also helps you retain your employees. Here's how the math works. You can pick your industry, Based on the industry, you can understand, you can input your uh, average annual salary for an employee and say how many employees you have. This can all be done online at the Cornerstone website now. And it's gonna calculate for you what is the opportunity, right? What kind of savings are available? Now, you have to look at net savings because it does cost money to allocate that time to do the training. It's not free. And even if the training itself were somehow free, there's opportunity cost of those people taking the time to train. But the cost of replacing those people is much higher than the cost of allowing the person to train. And so the math works, and this is a very compelling return on investment. and something that we've been doing, and it works. And we are now encouraging all of our clients to think about this, spend 5% of the employee time to train. Now maybe you don't do that. Maybe you do have the turnover. Wouldn't be surprising because employee turnover is the highest it's been in 10 years. Now, that's not necessarily a terrible thing. It's not that all companies have gotten worse. Part of it is we're in a tight labor market so there's more opportunities for people, it's easier for them to go somewhere else, but it also means, in general, companies are not doing a good job empowering their people, developing their people, retaining their people, and this is very costly. Depending on what kind of job we're talking about, when the person leaves, it's expensive. Now there's a lot of reasons it's expensive. Part of it is just the reality of how much it costs to replace a person. So even if it's a low level employee, if they leave the organization, there's a reasonable chance that you're gonna have to spend some significant dollars to replace that person. But the more senior they are, the more expensive it is. And this makes sense, right? The, the more senior somebody is, likely the more people they impact and therefore if somebody very senior leaves who's running a department or a division, that might cause a number of people to leave the organization and therefore that person leaving, especially involuntarily, is going to be, uh, that, that person leaving voluntarily against your desire is something that would have a real impact on the cost to the organization. And we've all seen this, we've all seen the reality here, and it could be absolute dollars, or it could be opportunity cost, or wasted time, onboarding costs, it's expensive. So the, the cheapest way to, the most effective way to save money in this case is just to retain the employees in the first place. If you don't invest in your talent, you're gonna lose them. Right? The data is very, very clear now. People want to be treated well. People want to have opportunities. They want to keep developing. People want to realize their potential. Makes sense, right? Everybody does. Every athlete wants to. Every employee wants to achieve what they're capable of doing. And it's incumbent on organizations to enable that, but it's also a little bit incumbent on the employee to do that. 
And this is true not just for individuals, it's also true for teams. So if you're not confident about your HR data, which would put you in the big majority of people who are not confident about their HR data, isn't it a problem that that's the data you're using to make big company decisions? You're using that data to decide who does what. You're using that data to decide what gets spun off, what gets added on, how to reorg the business. And yet the data you're using to do that you're not confident about, and the results of a bad reorg are severe. Right, 80% of reorgs don't deliver the value. This is similar to M&A, right? Most acquisitions don't deliver on the initial promise. Most reorganizations don't deliver on the theory. But more importantly, perhaps, is that 60% of the time, there's a big reduction in productivity. You need to have the right data in order to make the right decisions. It doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to have a failed reorg. It doesn't need to be 80%. If you have the right data, if you understand your people, you understand the potential of individuals, their performance, where they are in their career journey, where they are in their development, and you help them to achieve more, you can much more effectively manage the organization as a whole. So being proactive and simplifying the data, having the right data to recognize the full talent potential is something that's really valuable. But how do you do this? We understand that it's great for people. We understand that it's smart for business. But how do you actually unlock potential? What's the trick? What do you have to do? Well, we think it boils down to really just two things. You need to manage the talent, right? This is the perspective of the company. The company has to make sure that people are operating effectively. But at the same time, you have to give some of the power to the employee. We all have smartphones now. We all are able to take control of our destiny. We all have a lot of power on us at all times. Let the employee unleash some of that power. Help the employee in their career journey. When we think about talent management, we're really thinking about the different processes and tools you need and techniques to manage your people, right? How do you recruit the best people with the right candidate experience, with the right onboarding program? How do you develop people most effectively with different modalities of training, with different types of programs, all of which are meant to make your people more effective and give them the chance to be more effective while at the same time being compliant? How do you manage performance in a way that's transparent to the employee so the employee understands what their goals are and how they align to the rest of the organization so that the employee understands what their manager and their coworkers think of them and they understand what kind of competencies they have and what kind they need, what skills they need to do better, to move into that next role. And how do we manage the organization as a whole? Have the right data to make smart decisions, leveraging analytics to make recommendations so you can make the right final decision. But it's not just about that, right? A lot of that is from the perspective of the company, the executive, the manager. It's things we do to the employee or for the employee on behalf of the employee. What about the other part of it? The employee themselves. Right? We live in a very empowered world now where people have the ability to take control of their destiny. So why not give them the tools 
give them the ability to manage their own journey. We think of this as talent experience. And so talent experience really is the idea that you understand where on the journey the employee is. Are they new to a job or new to the company? Right, that first week, that first month, that first year, what are the kind of things you need as an employee to be successful? What about your, you've been in the job for a little while, but you want to get better at the job. You want mastery of what you're doing. You want to develop skills to not only be really good at that job, but maybe consider the next job. And by the way, what if you're ready for the next job? How do you decide what the next move is? How do you even see and identify what kind of career opportunities are available to you and if something is of interest, how do you understand whether or not you have the right competencies and skills for that job? And if you don't, what is the right training path to get better at that? And what if you move up and now you're the manager and you're running a team for the first time? Or maybe you're an experienced manager but you really want a high-performing organization. How do you do that? What are the tools, what are the capabilities to be able to do that? We think there's an opportunity to help people in both of these areas.